Tabletop CP, and today we're heading to the peninsula for a game of Pulp Alley. Yeah, so you heard that right. Uh, we're on the peninsula, but we're not playing sharp, sharp practice. We're not playing bolt action. We're playing Pulp Alley. So Pulp Alley is a game we played a couple times. I played it with Dave on his uh, his channel, the Pulp Alley channel. And if you haven't checked that out and you're into this game or you want to learn about it, I highly uh, recommend you going over to his YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description. But of course, uh, tons of Pulp Alley content there. All you could ever need uh, to figure out uh, the game and how it's played and what you might need to play it. So after playing a couple games uh, with uh, Andre and then against Dave on his channel, um, I got talking to Dave about uh, other settings that we could play it in. And he's a fan of the Sharp books and the Black Powder era and the Peninsula and all that as well as I am. And I just suggested maybe, you know, a Richard Sharp type mission would be kind of cool. So uh, he agreed and he was nice enough to write a special mission for us. And it's based around Sharp and his boys uh, causing, <laughs> causing havoc somewhere on the peninsula. Let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, we'll talk about the terrain. So tonight's mat is the Cigar Box Battle Medieval City mat. Uh, we've used this a lot for all kinds of places on the peninsula before everywhere. So uh, as far as terrain in the game goes, it does play a part. It's not super huge. Uh, there's not lots of uh, finely tuned terrain rules. It's very simple. Uh, we'll get into that as the game goes. Uh, but there's some high walls these uh, they're just going to be reduce your move by two since they're two inches tall obviously you can't see through them uh, there's going to be some short walls here uh, the mission is going to be a night mission so we're going to say while the men are undetected they'll these will block line size we're assuming they're crouching behind them so there's some short walls around the church and around that little uh, granary there and there's some more high walls over here and over here and then the rest of the terrain individual trees count as trees they count as cover because this is a skirmish game so each model is its own unit so you can use individual trees there's not really dense terrain or anything like that that you might find in a squad or platoon level sized games so uh yeah that's it for the terrain so let's talk about the mission so this this mission setup might take a little bit longer than normal but uh, I want to go over it. So this is going to be a co-op mission. Uh, this is the first time Andre and I have ever played a co-op mission on the channel. We did do a play test of this, I should mention, and with Dave the other night. And we have tweaked it a little bit from the original one he sent me. So I'm, he'll probably update it, and I sh hopefully I can put it with the uh, video, or I'll put it on the uh, Facebook group for you guys to play if you play Pulp Alley and you want to try this mission out. Um, so, uh, as I said, it's a co-op mission. It's going to be uh, the... Me and Andre are going to be the 95th Rifles, and we're going to be against the French, obviously. Um, and I'm not going to go in too deep into the rules of the game right now. This isn't a teaching or a learning game, but there's going to be uh, four plot points. And the plot points are going to be placed random, or not random. We're going to place them on the table. They have to be 12 inches from the corners, and I think six inches from each other. Uh, the director will pass between Andre and I, and it will matter. Uh, and then deployment wise, Andre and I can place our guys starting from the corners, however we want. So we can go around and come out of each corner. Uh, we can load up one whole group into one corner, however, however we want to do it based on how the uh, plot points come out. Uh, there will also be a random event we'll roll for at the beginning of the table. There's a D10 chart that we'll roll on to see what we get uh, for a random event for, for each of us. And... As far as the bad guys, so they're going to be non-player characters, and they're always going to activate at the end of the turn. Andre and I will always go first, and there's a couple ways they're going to re uh, react. So first, deployment-wise, wherever the plot points turn up, like we'll say this is a plot point, we're going to put two of them around here. So each of, each of the plot points is going to have two guards, and there's going to be two guards in the center of the table as well. The two guards in the center are going to move randomly in a random direction, every turn. Uh, D8 in a random direction, I believe. Have to double check that. Um, and they will just keep doing that until the alarm is raised. So this is a nighttime mission. Uh, there's some special nighttime rules that we'll go over now. So this is a stealth mission. All players, uh, all, all players, that being me and Andre, and all our characters are going to start the game hidden. There's also dark shadows. So the line of sight is limited to 12 inches. Hidden players, um, they move up to six and remain hidden. And the alarm will be raised uh, when a character is spotted. So if we move into line of sight within 12 inches of a guard, we have to take a test to see if they spot us or not. And if they do, the alarm will be raised 
but only on that guy that got spotted. The rest of the guys will stay hidden. Uh, there also be the alarm will also be raised when someone fires. And yeah, I think that's how the alarm will be raised. Um, and once the alarm is raised, the turn after that, uh, re reinforcements will start showing up at any uncontested plot point. So any plot point that we haven't secured will generate some reinforcements. The four plot points, there's going to be four, they're going to be random. When we get to one, we'll roll and see what it is. So the first one is the uh, lady from Madrid. That's the name of the mission. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, when, you pass the, when you pass that plot point, you are going to have the lady and you can only move six inches. There's also steal the dispatches. So in one of the plot points, there's going to be some secret French papers that we're going to have to find and secure. There's going to be a powder cache. One of them is going to be a powder cache that we have to destroy. And that's going to be uh, kind of an interactive plot point once secured, as it may, as it will blow up. So when you secure it, we'll have to decide if we want to put one or three fuses in it. And that will determine how many turns after we do it, um, after we secure it, that it will blow up. And if it blows up, it will harm uh, figures, I think, that were within six inches of we'll have to roll a random peril. And then the last one is a French officer that we have to capture. So those are the four plot points. Or the four plot, yeah, the four plot points for the four plot points. You know what I mean. Um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll get to those. Uh, and there, this is a, I think, a nine turn mission. So we're going to have nine turns to secure all of the plot points. I think I covered the uh, basics of the mission. I went over it a little bit haphazardly, possibly, but uh, when you look at it, when you get the mission yourself, you can, uh, it's spelled out a lot clearer than I just said it. So, uh, yeah, so that's the mission. So let's go ahead and talk about the forces. So we'll start over here with the 95th rifle. So both Andre and I are going to have two groups of five riflemen. Uh, we're only going to be able to bring four into the mission. Though. So we're going to have to pick um, one of them to not be part of the mission. And the three guys in the back here are the allies. So they're the lowest rank that we have in our group. And uh, two of them are kind of buff for shooting. One of them is buff for fighting hand-to-hand. -hand. So we have to decide if we want to bring two shooters or a hand-to-hand -hand guy and a shooter. So uh, yeah, so we're start off here. Uh, Sharp is over here. Harper is over here. They're both going to be our leaders. So they're our highest ranking guys. They're our best guys. They have the best chance of passing any stealth checks. And then we have two sidekicks. So these are the next level down from the leaders. And here we have Hagman and over here we have Harris. And then over here, just the, the guys in the back are going to be, we got here, Tongue, Moore, and then, well, whoever doesn't play is going to be one of those guys. So, And then our guys back here are going to be McDonald and Jenkins. So those are the riflemen. Um, I think that's pretty much all there is to say about that. They do have some special rules. Sharp has a rule called sharp. Once per turn, uh, he may re-roll one shooter finesse dice. He also has a rule called indomitable. He may re-roll one recovery check per turn. And he's also fierce, which is a extra dice in his brawl, which is included in his profile, which is 4d10. And um, Harper's gonna be the same exact as sharp. And then our sidekicks, um, our, uh, Hagman and Harris, are gonna have slam once per turn, discard uh, a card to gain plus one to Brawl or Might, and then they also have Fierce. And the uh, sidekicks are all gonna have Marksman, or the two shooters are gonna have Marksman, which gives them an extra shoot dice, and the Brawler guy is gonna have Fierce, which is gonna give him an extra Brawl dice. So that is the 95th Rifles. Over here we have the French. Uh, these are the NPCs. They're very low level guys. They're as basic as they get. They're pretty much one or two D6 and everything. So they're pretty easy to take out, but there's gonna be quite a few of them to, to make it more challenging. So there's going to be 12 of them, there's going to be 10 of them on the board to start and then some there will be reinforcements coming in as well. And then back here we have our plot points, so we have the lady from Madrid, we have the French officer, the powder kegs and then the dispatches. And that's going to be uh, the four random plot points. So when we, when we get up to one of them and we pass it, we'll roll and we'll, just, we'll figure out which one it is going to be and then we'll have to pass the challenge and then the plot point test and everything else that goes with it. So kind of a long rambling intro here i apologize but uh, there's quite a bit to this one so but i think i've covered everything and we're ready to get started andre's arrived he's going to take sharp and the boys i'm going to take 
Harper and his boys, and we've placed the plot point. So one plot point is here. Uh, we just left them where they were from our play test. <laughs> but one, one, Shh, one is here. They don't know that. Well, I already went through it, and everything was already on the board where it is. <laughs> <laughs> In full disclosure, uh, one is here, one is there, and one is here. So two sentries per plot point, and then two rovers who are going to move a random D8 until the alarm is raised. Uh, and again, these plot points are the four one, the four random ones that I explained uh, in the intro. Now we both draw on our three fortune cards. I got focus, which is a plus one for might, finesse, and cunning. I'm all right, which means I pass the first health or recovery check, and then misfortune, which means nothing because it only works when an opponent plays a card on me, and they won't play cards on me. So. <laughs> But I could I use it. one to discard. Yeah, you could discard it. And then Andre got stay down, Which is stumble. the enemy cannot roll a recovery check at the end of their Which turn. Which they don't anyway. Stumble, move the enemy X in a random direction. Hmm. That could be good. Uh, yeah. And uh, gain a steady aim, getting a plus one bonus. So that's okay. uh, solid. So those are our, our fortune cards. That's the position of all the... Um, plot points in these sentries, and let's roll a, I believe a d6 to see who starts off as director. Oh, so I'm going to be the director, Mr. Director, sir. So Harper will be director. So next up, we'll deploy our own guys. Director, I deployed first, so I put uh, Harper and who is that? Uh, McDonald, my shooter, over here towards that plot point. And over here I put Harris and Jenkins. And over here we have Captain Sharp. And then back there we got uh, Tongue, his brawler. And then over here we have Hagman and more by those trees. And I think that's it. So we're ready to begin and we'll get started. I'll be, I'll be the director, so I think I'll just do my movement first. Movement's complete on our side. So first I had Harper move up here. And then uh, McDonald went over the wall. We only went six inches. If you go six inches, you stay hidden. If you move, go over six, you lose your hidden. Uh, and then over here, I had Harris and uh, Jenkins move up, staying behind the wall. Because if I moved out here, which I almost did with Harris, I would have had to take two spotting checks. So next time, I'm probably going to move around here just to try to get one spotting check only. Now moving over here, who is that? Tongue over there on the edge. He just moved that way. And then Sharp moved up here next to the granary. And then over here we had Hagman move up. He's going to need a spotting check. Maybe two. Wait, you might be in the same boat I just was. And then uh, uh, Moore has moved up there into the church courtyard. So next we will do spotting checks. A little bit of adjustment. Uh, Andre thought that Hagman was Sharp. And Sharp was well, Hagman. Sharp is Hagman. <laughs> Hagman is Sharp. But now, Hag now Sharp is over here. So he just did a swap. He thought his number one was over here. So spotting checks, the way it works is you roll your finesse. His finesse is three, but he's got sneaky, which gives him a plus one. So we're going to roll four D10. This guy's going to roll one D6, which means I Andre has to just get more four pluses than I do. So I just have to get one. Yep. And, and I got two. Okay. So Sharp was not spotted. He is just uh, and then sneaking up. The other on guy? Him. The other guy now will do it. He's within 12 of Sharp. He don't get one either. Andre got two. <sighs> just. Just. All right. See, we'll see who, who else needs one. Next is going to be Harper. He's just in range of this guy. So I got one. But. Woo. Oh, I got to get more than you. Yep. Well, even if you roll a six, I still got more than you, right? No. <laughs> oh, <don't> <laughs> oh man, that would have been bad. A near miss. Even with four D tens, I only got hit. one. <laughs> All right, but Sharp and Harper are sneak up on, sneaking up on these two guys, and I think that's those it. are the only. Yep. Everybody checks. else is. So now it's the end of our turn. So next the. Sentries are all going to move. So the two wandering sentries both move this way. This guy got the full eight inch move. He must have heard something over here. Says he's moving over here with a purpose. 
This guy's a little hesitant, falling behind only four inches. And it's a spotting check. He did move within spotting range of me. So do we have to do that spot now? Yep. I don't know. Okay. All you gotta do is get one. All you gotta do is get one. 3D10. This is Harper. He's not really good at sneaking 3D10. around. 3D10. He's... Ah, yeah, we got two. Okay. So Harper was able to avoid detection again. Yes, and so that is the end of turn one. Their sentries are staying put. These guys are wandering and we're moving in. And I'm the director, so we move on to turn two. So as director, uh, Andre has convinced me as my co-op partner <laughs> <laughs> to, because I was going to have uh, Harper move up, but Andre said he was with, he's within sneaking distance of this guy. So Sharp's sneaking up with his sword. He's going to try to cut his throat. But first he needs a spotting check. So finesse 3d10. Two. He got two. There's no way that I can spot him with 1d6. Now Sharp's brawl is 4d10. Wow. Yeah, he's good. He's yes, sharp. Yes, he is. And that he would got be three. three. So defense rolls. Yeah, three nine six. Uh, you can roll those, Andre. So he needs three defense hits of four plus. Oh, oh damn. what? Oh, he's the Wargaming World Dice. <laughs> he passed the defense checks. That what? is not good. <laughs> this guy. Wow, Sharp. I am disappointed in you. Uh, no, I hit him well enough. You snuck sneak attack. Well, I didn't know the guy was ass. wearing plate armor when I stabbed him four times. <laughs> yeah, well, he lives. So what? So what's going to happen now? He's going to turn to face Sharp, and when the NPC turn begins, the alarm will sound already. So it's going to get hot here real fast. Um, okay, so that was Sharp. So we'll continue on. Uh, so as Andre just mentioned to me. Now that we know the alarm's gonna be raised, there's no point in sneaking around. So we barely made it. We just got to turn two before the alarm was <laughs> When we did our play test, we were sneaking up and killing these guys easily. We were, yeah, it was uh, deep into turn yeah, four was, before, uh, or three anyway. Yeah, but now it's a totally different game, but that's how it goes with random spottings and weird things happening like that. So first I'm gonna have, Harper's gonna run up here and he's gonna try to club this guy over the head with his seven barrel Musket. Uh, I got three. three. Okay, so three so checks. I have to get three. I got yeah. one. He's down. He's dead. So Harper has killed that guy. Next up, I'm going to have McDonald. Private McDonald's going to come into this opening here, and he's going to fire on that guy. He's my shooter, so he's at a three d six. And you're not quite just six. over six. Yep. So if I was in six, I would have got an extra shot. Anyway, so we're going to fire away with McDonald. Oh, two successes. Okay. So do I get to fire back? Yes. Yeah, he'll shoot back with... Uh... So this Frenchman will shoot back at McDonald. 2d6? I think so, yeah. So 2d6 back at you. Oh, he hit two, I hit two. So... Uh, we're gonna put there is a rule. I forgot to mention in the beginning. Uh, there's a special rule that Dave made for the muskets. It's one shot You can't move more than six and um, Fire I think and then you you only get one shot So we're gonna denote that with these that means that if anyone else were to shoot at that same guy later in the turn They wouldn't be able to shoot back uh, so he got two I got two and as a human player I can decide if I want to try to block those or dodge them or not but I'm not going to. I'm going to take his two, and he's going to have to take my two. So we will roll health checks. Both of you roll two nice health checks. So, McDonald, oh, he failed two of them. The other guy failed one. So they're both down. So he's down. And he's just... Moved, and then the French right? guy is dead. So McDonald is down wounded. So Jenkins is going to pop around. I briefly debated charging all the way across, but it turns out he would have got to use some defensive shooting, and so he would have had 3d6, and my brawl is 3d6, this is my brawler. So it's a, as Andre says, I don't like fair fights. <laughs> <laughs> Although we're having another fair fight right here. But, but it's a, <laughs> a much less lethal fair fight. So instead, Jenkins is going to pop around the corner, 
and he's going to fire his musket off at this guy, and then he'll get to shoot back. So, leading fours. Oh, two hits for Jenkins. One hit, hit for that. the French guy. Do you want to defend against that four? I'm going to defend the four with the five. Okay. And then... And one dice health check for the French guy. He fails. <laughs> Jenkins has killed the Frenchman. Nice shot. Nice shot, Jenkins. And then um, Harris will come around the corner and he will fire at the other Frenchman. Doesn't he want to come out uh, six inches? Oh, yeah, he can go out further on. And still be in those trees. Yep. So Harris will come out and do some shooting. Harris has moved out uh, D6 or <laughs> six inches out here into the orchard. So he will be in cover. I just move these trees back for camera purposes. And he's going to fire at this guy. Uh, he is my sidekick, so he's going to get 3d6. Two hits. And I got two fours. And Hunter, I got a four, four and a five. five. Wow. Block his four with one of my fours. And then we'll both have to take a health check. Oh man, the French guy passes. Come on, Harris. Harris passes. All good. So they fired at each other and didn't do any damage. That's it for my guys. So over here we took out one guy and we've taken out two guys over here. And now Andre will go uh, with what he has left. Private Moore has moved up to the corner here. And he's going to take a shot at this guy right there. Private Moore gets 3d6. He's got, got one, one five, and this guy will turn around, raise his musket, and fire back with nothing. Pew, pew. So one defense roll, got failed. Him. So Moore has shot this guy down. Nice. Okay, and he'll be out of ammo, and, and then we'll move on. Okay, so next up we're going to have Hagman is charged around the corner. This Frenchman is going to get some firing on the way in, though. So Hagman's a uh, 3d8. Brawl, but he has the slam rule, which once per turn he can discard a card. So Andre discarded the stay down card, which is essentially useless in this game to us. So, did you get me on the way in? Fire! I got one. And Andre's got a seven and a six. So I'll block one and okay. take one to you. He fails. So Hagman has uh, bayoneted that guy to death. And then Tongue will go next. So Tongue is not going to fire, um, so he's just going to move up. He can move up further, though. Actually, yeah. We'll, uh, yeah, might as well just move up. We'll do that and just kind of hang out. And... All right, so Tongue and Hagman are approaching that plot point. Oh, over here we got Harris and Jenkins. Then we have Harper and uh, McDonald, who's down. Sharp is about to fight that guy again. And then uh, Moore over there is firing away from behind that wall. And it is now the uh, French turn. Start here. Uh, so these guys fought. So if you fought already, you are drop a die. So he was originally 1d6. He's not going to be anything. He's uh, kind of flat footed. And Sharp is still rolling in at 3d10 now. Ouch. Oh, wow. Three of them. Oh, you're, you're going to roll them this time? I'm going to roll them this time. You want to roll them? Here, you roll them. Since you did so well oh, last no, time. No, no, no. Let's, let's see what you got. All let's right, see then. what you got. Oh, oh almost. So close. <laughs> <laughs> One pip off of saving it. <laughs> this guy would have been a legend in France. Yep. <laughs> and Spain. <laughs> and <laughs> Portugal. I survived two attacks from Richard Schiff. <laughs> <laughs> so over here, this guy is going to turn and fire a shot at Hagman. He's going to get uh, plus one for being within six. So he's 3d6 versus Hagman's 3d6 um, because he's 3d6 because he uh, is within six. And, and he, he lost I one. I lost earlier. one, yeah. but I'm going up to 4d6 uh, with the card steady aim. Okay, so let's see what Hagman can do. Looks like three. Oof. All right, let's see what this French guy can do. I'll block one. All right, so no. I have to... Oh. The character is allowed to block, and that's the Frenchman. All right, so the Frenchman will do three. Yes. 
Oh, so close. And then Hagman, Hagman will have to do one. Hagman passes. Woohoo! Another French one done. Down, and we'll move on. Right over here, these two guys moved uh, toward, six inches toward the nearest visible enemy, who was Harper. And they're both going to fire a, a volley in. Well, or a shot, I should this say. This guy's going to fire first. <laughs> they're both together going to fire a volley. Okay, so this guy here. He one. got one. Okay. And I will fire back. Oh, three. I'll block. No, no you I can't. can't. I'm active. Okay. All right, so I will roll that. I do pass. And then I got three back at me. Oh! oh no. Oh, again. All right, no more defense rolling for Andre. <laughs> okay, so this guy will now fire his musket at, at Harper. He's one. got one. So and Harper you're down another die because... Down to two. So take that back. Harper cannot fire. He's already fired his musket. So he's got a five. I'm going to dodge. Harper's going to try to dodge out of the way. His dodge is two D8. Ah, pretty decent dodge. For a big man? Oh, yeah. No problem. He dodges him. That was Harper. <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, well, yeah, but uh, <laughs> okay. So that'll do it for the uh, turn two. So what we have now is Harper and is facing off with these guys. Everyone's going to reload uh, this now. And so Harper's here. Uh, oh, I was going to use the I'm all right card. I just instantly pass a uh, recovery check. So I'm going to use that to get Recovered. McDonald up. Yay. And um, yeah, and then we have over there we have Hagman and Tongue. So we have some unsecured plot points. So we, all four of them. All, all four of them are going to be unsecured. So there's going to be a French reinforcements are going to appear. Oh, and this guy kind of ducked back behind the wall to reload. So we'll place the reinforcements and then we'll come back. So Andre is the director since he was the last one to take a Frenchman out. And he's nominated uh, McDonald. I guess he wants me to shoot somebody with him. So McDonald will do something. Andre is nominated McDonald to go first. So McDonald's moved up behind here. And he's going to see if he can take this dude out. So I'm going to get 46 for the point blank. And he's the shooter. Oh man, I only got one. One each. And your four doesn't take my five, so you can't even block it. That's a, huh? We'll take them. Uh, defense check. Oh no, McDonald's down again. <laughs> oh no, the French guy lives. Oh, cover save. That means I get to reroll that. Ah, he makes Ooh, it on the cover okay. save. Yeah, Thank God for that cover. Still up is the thing. Yeah, that means we're not going to be able to get the. Uh, well, unless Harper. unless I, oh, no, he, I can. That's right. Moore could take him down. Yeah, Moore could uh, fight him. So Moore's going to hop out into uh, the open here and take a shot. Okay, he can't fire back because he's already fired. So this is three D. Forty-six. Four, yeah, isn't it? that's your shooter. The shootest. Got two. Two. All right. Two defense checks for the French guy. He fails. Down. He's down. So that means Sharp could go and try to do that plot point when he activates. Which. Uh, I'm gonna just do that now. Mm, I'll let Andre think. Of it. So Andre's gonna have a private tongue. The brawler is gonna move up there, and he's gonna three d six. Ooh, two sixes against this guy's measly 1d6. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tongue with the long sword bayonet. Oh, he got, got him. It. Okay, well that means that Hagman can try to do that plot point for sure yeah. now. Uh, next up is going to be Harper. So he's going to charge in on both of these guys. So I have 4d10. I'm going to split. So the black dice will be on this guy. The white dice will be on this guy, and they only get 1d6 each. So let's start over here with this guy. Only one. A 10, though. This guy here got two. So he fails. He fails. 
Nice. So two health checks. Okay. So this guy here, he Got lives. It. So that guy dies. So Harper took one of the two French guys down. Okay. And he's still engaged, engaged. so when the other guy would fight back, he'll get taken out. Yep, because he can't roll anything on the next fight. Uh, so we have this left over here. Up, Harris is going to move up, and he's going to fire at this guy. So what we're going to do is we're going to make him fire his shot, and then we're going to charge him. Could you measure that, Andre? I should probably decide, <laughs> figure out if he's even in range to do this maneuver. It looks with. like it. That looks like 12. Yeah, yeah. okay. No problem. All right, so Harris will come up. He'll fire his 3D6 at this guy here. A six and a five. five. You so just want to block it? Yeah, we'll just, we'll just block it. That'll give a chance for uh, Jenkins to charge. So this guy is normally a 1d6 brawl, but he already fought, so he's going to be a 0d6. And Jenkins is a 3d6 because he's my brawler. Come on down. So come on, Jenkins. Got two. Got two. Two saves. Two fails. All right, Jenkins, bayonet to the face. And uh, that's how that's Boom. done tactically. Yep. Uh, and that is everyone. Except for my number one and number two. Yeah, so now we can try to see if we can get some of these plot points. Sharp is going to go up, and we're going to see. So we got to roll to see which one it is. Okay, so it's uh, one through four. So yeah. I'll do a D8. One. It's the, the first one first on the list. One. So it's the lady, which is perfect for Sharp. So the lady crawls out of the wagon, okay. and we and have to pull a, a card. fortune card. This is, oh, come on. Challenge finesse wands. We just has to finesse her. Well, I think. It's Sharp, come on. No he problem. can finesse her. 3D, so. 3D10, I believe, is your finesse. 3D10. I just need a four on one of these. He got we one. finessed it. So we finessed her. Now we got to see if we can convince her to go with us. And might or finesse two. Ooh. So is he going to try to finesse her again, or are you going to try to just manhandle her? Uh, we'll see what what's might my is. might for? Uh, your might is 3d10. So they're both the same. Oh, he's a finesser. Yeah, it's, it's a lady. He's a smoothie. He'll finesse. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Got All it. Right. So he's convinced the lady from Madrid to come with us. So she is now with Richard Sharp. The lady from Madrid. We yep. should make a movie. <laughs> Write a book. Make a mission. <laughs> the lady from Madrid. And so now she is with Sharp for the rest of the game. So he can only move six inches from now on. So we'll move on to the next one. And next up, Hagman's going to move up and see what is in here. So we're doing the D3s. second, third, and fourth. So I'll roll a d6. Okay. And that would be the last one, number four. The officer. Oh, okay. So they find an officer, drunk French officer. Pops out. Pops out of nowhere and behind these boxes. Right. And we'll Pull see what happens card. for Hagman. Cunning or might, two. Hmm. So Hagman is cunning... 2d6 and might 3d8 so it'll we probably be easier for mighty, Hagman to just mighty might to try to subdue him we're not gonna try and outwit a drunk Frenchman <laughs> no, you won't get very far got, I got two successes okay so that's that one so you've subdued him let's see if you can tie him up one in might no problem you got it Whew, you, you say no problem that worries me <laughs> All right, so we've uh, Hagman's captured the French officer. Sharp has seduced the lady, and we move on to turn. Oh no, the French need to go now. Sorry, right? Yeah, the, now the French turn. We'll start here with Harper against this guy. Harper's down to two d eight. Uh, that guy's got zero now because he already fought. So Harper, ooh, just one. Can he take him down? Yes. He does. So Harper kills that guy. Next up will be this guy here. So he'll take a shot. Pop around and 2d6. He's already fought. He hasn't shot yet though. So he could shoot back. 
although he's only got a 2d6, so it'll be 3d6 for point blank for both of these guys. And go for it, Andre, you go first. Woo! That's a huge whiff. Okay, so he missed his shot. Now let's see if Jenkins can get the shot. Uh, I got two. All right. Hit the Frenchman twice. Oh. Oh, he's down. He saved one. And the French are dropping like flies. Uh, but he, they're all done. So this yep. is going to be unopposed. Yep. So there'll be two reinforcements coming out for turn four. Got this guy. He's uh, moving up six, and he's going to fire at Harper with 3d6. Actually, Harper can fire back, can he? Yeah, he hasn't shot yet. No, yeah, he can. He'd only have, he's fought twice. Yeah, so his shoot is 3d6. Oh, no, I'm sorry, 3d10, so he'd be 1d10. Huh? Okay, Against so 3d6. Here we go. Oh, Ooh. that's a hit on Harper for sure. So, <laughs> should you dodge or? I don't think I can, can I? Can You can always dodge, can't you? Mm. We'll try to dodge that shot with 2d8. Oh, one and a two. Woo. Wow. Okay. Harper's going to have to take a three dice health check. Ouch. Here's the thing you can he use got hit with that You got any ball. cards? I got two of them. No, I used the one that I could have done something with that. Uh, yeah. Nope. I, I used my card. Sorry about that. His health is D10, not D6. Because he is Harper. He did worse. <laughs> he took two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It was, it was fated to happen, so he is injured, yeah. Okay, so he just takes one injury. Yeah. So he's going to drop a level. So his D10s drop to D8s, his D8s drop to D6s. And oh, my. Yeah, okay, now... Reinforcements! <laughs> here they come. All right, so uh, moving on to turn four. Reinforcement here, reinforcement here. Andre's got his two. Now it's my job to get these two, apparently. But Harper's wounded, but he don't care. He's going to get up there and clear those guys out. So I am now the director since I killed the Frenchman last. And I'll figure out what to do. So one thing we forgot, uh, at the end of each turn, I get to roll a recovery check. So if I roll a four plus, uh, he shrugs it off. Oh, oh yeah, it's Harper. He shrugs it off. Nothing to it. All right. Start with Jenkins. What's his gonna... within, or you didn't want to try and oh pass all the tests with him? Okay, yeah. Gotcha. So we're gonna try to kill this guy with Jenkins, my brawler. So three, I got two, Andre. So yep, one back one, at you. One back at me, yeah. Oh, a six. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> and so I can't block it. I take two. You take one. Okay. I don't pass mine. You pass. You don't one. pass one of yours. Wow. So they're both, well, I'm down, here dead. But I'll have a chance to try to recover with him. Yeah. So that means I don't get to see what it is. But I will run Harris up here. Let's he can't try for it, but he can at least see what it is. So it's... Uh, so it's either the second or the... It's either uh, the, it's either the uh, second powder or, the, third or the dispatches. It's the third one. Dispatches. It's the dispatches. Okay. Uh, all right, there's some dispatches hidden somewhere in that <laughs> pile of uh, wheat sacks. <laughs> All right, we'll move on. So I'll have Harper run up here, and we're going to try and take that guy down. So 4d10 from Harper. I got two. Against two sevens. Six. Yep. He, two, uh, two recover or two defense checks for you. <laughs> oh my God, the French guy. These are some tough. They like Frenchmen. to brawl. They like to survive, bro. <laughs> uh, okay, that's Harper. That's almost oh, the oh, last guy here. Let me think what I want to do with McDonald. And McDonald's advanced out, and we're going to fire at that guy there. This is my shooter, so 3d6. I got two, a five, and a four. You got Shut none. back, nothing, so... Two defense two. checks. Oh, again with the... Wow. Nothing to it. Wow, the guys that spawn in the middle there are pretty tough. Uh, so that's it for me. So now it's Andre's can do all his stuff. So Hagman moved up, uh, dragging that dead uh, drunk officer. With him. <laughs> He's gonna fire at this guy, point blank. Three oh, three hits. sixes, and the guy cannot fire back since he already fired. 
his musket, so we'll see if I can pull an Andre here. Yo, oh, almost. So almost. close, so close. The next private Moore is going to charge in and try to help Harper. Roar! He's got two, two hits. Two hits. Uh, okay, and the Frenchman already fought. So he's in bad... Oh, he doesn't make it. So we've cleared the board. Yeah, I think this game's pretty much over, man. Well, they're still going to respawn, but... One guy. Two guys. Oh, yeah, that's right. One guy here, huh? Yep. But still... Uh, but there's none left on the board to act at the end uh, during their part of this turn. Yes. You guys did really good. I, I think we might still have to have the uh, <laughs> difficulty on this scenario. Yeah, so we'll have to, uh, we'll put out the reinforcements. So next turn is turn five. Uh, I forgot to uh, roll here for Jenkins. Recovery check. Yep. He's up. Ah, so we haven't lost a rifleman yet. But the reinforcement there and this guy... He's not looking good for him. So Andre is still the director. So you want to just? I will uh, drag the lady over and take a shot at. Uh, this Sharp dude. will take a shot. Okay. All right. Okay, Sharp. Three D ten. You got two. Two and two D six. Two D six back at me. Come on, kill him. Hell no. Right. Uh, two or two, two health checks. Got oh, him. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> but he's unloaded. He is unloaded now. Okay, so Brawler will. All right, Tom going in. in. 3d6. I'm only going to get no d6. <laughs> no d6 back. Two health checks. Got him. <sighs> Woo! It's got my, that must be from the mean streets of Paris. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's my guy. Oh. Um. Okay, uh, he activates. Okay. Yeah, we're going in. <laughs> okay, I'm down to, I got 2d6, so we're going to get our bayonet out. I got one. got one. Can he survive another of round? Of course he can. Yes! Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> the Iron Frenchman. Um, okay, uh, this guy will activate next. Okay, he can't shoot though. Nope. Hmm. But he's, here he goes. Ah, uh, just one four. <laughs> <laughs> he saves it again. Wow. So that's uh, four, four, uh, four <laughs> he survived, attacks. He uh, survived. Yeah, he survived a shot from Sharp's rifle. He survived McDonald, Moore, and Tong all attacking him. He's still there. So, can you go in and try and disable or? Do the uh, plot point when he's still in contact with it? I don't think so. No, he cannot. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I can charge him. I I would. But All right, or, well, Harper. Hang on. That guy can move six. Actually, I'm. I am with. Oh, am I? No, I'm not with. How about six. if Harper goes over here? Yeah. Kills him, and then you come in. With Hagman and and to get the plot. Point. Actually, I am within six of the plot point. Right. I didn't think of that. All right, so we will have uh, Harper will come around. So he's at negative five on his <laughs> uh, dice. And I think I. What do I get? Harper is going to come in and show these guys how it's done. Yeah, four. <laughs> Try to roll four at four pluses there, Andre. Okay. <laughs> Come on, dude. You're on an epic streak here, guy. You can do this. Oh! oh! So close. Very close. That was so close to so amazing. <laughs> but he's down. Finally. Finally he's down. All right. We still got these guys. I'll activate here. Oh, plot point. Okay, so this is... Uh, this will be the dynamite. So let's see what your challenge will be. Dynamite! One in finesse. So you gotta open up the powder we'll barrels. Finesse the powder. So What's my powder. finesse? Be careful. Be careful with it. Finesse for that guy? Yeah, number two. Uh, it's 3d8. You only need one. That's another thing that's been helping us. Is we've been getting really low on those. Uh, well, we got challenges. some really nasty challenges on the warm up. Test, yeah. 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 Okay. So he's opened the powder kegs. Now let's see what he has to do to insert the fuse. 
two and cunning or am I? So he's got to figure it out or just ram them in there. <laughs> I think he's a rammer. 3d8 or 2d6, yeah. So 3d8 might. 3d8 might. Okay, mighty might. Nothing got it. to it. All right, so then you get to pick three or however many fuses you want to put in. We'll uh, we'll stick all three in there. Okay. Since we all <laughs> we got a hell of a crowd right yeah, here. Yeah, we don't want that thing going off at the end of this turn. <laughs> hey, we can take out more than half our dudes. Hey, we we cleaned we cleaned house and then all died to the explosion. <laughs> it was a trap. Hey, look it up. We stand around high fiving each other around the dynamite. All right, nice. we got these guys here. So how about if I just charge with uh, Jenkins, Your brawler, my brawler, three d six, and see if he can uh, see if he can take this dude down. Oh, only a four. One d six back at you. Nothing. And a recovery roll. That's cocked. Ah, uh, he That's lives. Good. Damn it. Okay, then I'm gonna have to do it with. Uh, Sadly, I'm going to have to use Harris. Yeah. And Harris's brawl is 3d8. 3d8. I got uh, just one. Okay. Wow. And I um, can't fight back. Hold on. I'm going to use my uh, slam to do another one. Discard a card. Okay, I got two. So, none back. But, oh, he's dead. Okay, we got him. But there's going to be another one popping up there now because yep. we didn't secure it. But we've got five, six guys that, uh, well, four guys that are going to run over there. Yeah, it's they're screwed. Yeah, he's, going to get <laughs> he's going to get lit up. So I think that's it for turn four. Yeah. We're going to call it. Uh, there's no way that one French guy is going to defeat the 95th Rifles. There's no way in hell. <laughs> So these guys are going to have three turns to get away from there. So we'll find the documents. Sharp's got the woman. Hagman's got the drunk officer. And planted and the, the dynamite. And planted the uh, fuses in the powder. Inevitably, we would find the documents. We'll get out of here, go back to base, to Wellington, tell them we mission accomplished. And that's it. So, uh, yeah, it was super easy this time, which... Is weird because our play test was super easy so we said you know what we're going to double the difficulty and add twice as many guys and it was just as easy so <laughs> well, a little bit harder but it, uh, uh, i i think the real difference on this one was the uh um, challenges were really easy, really yes. easy where <laughs> yeah that not, could have really jacked us up yeah but, last when we did the play test we were getting like three you got to get Twos three and threes. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So yeah. We, we failed a few. Like, I think yeah. in our play test, one of the guys got beat down by the woman. Yeah. He couldn't subdue her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we had a, at least one fail there. And that, that, that extended the, uh, if we had a fail here, it would have changed things a little bit. But Well, especially if it happens early on, um, getting, you know, revealed that early, uh, I thought was going to be. I like, thought that was bad. <laughs> well, it was bad. Um, it was bad, but I thought it was going to end up worse for us than it did. But, uh, it, yeah, it, well, actually the fact that it happened early in the, at the beginning of the turn is I think what saved us there. If we'd have all snuck up and done our oh, stealthy thing yeah. and then activated it, we wouldn't have been in near as good a position. Right. We wouldn't have taken down near as many dudes and it would have, yeah, so... We caught several lucky breaks, and I don't think this is as unbalanced as it uh, seemed. It it was fairly easy, but I think a lot of that just had to do with we caught a lot of breaks, and it could have gone sideways at a couple of points. Yeah, we yeah. got some lucky breaks. I think, so. also, I think also the fact that you guys had just recently played this scenario, I think you... I, I felt like you really came into this one having a, a maybe a better idea about what you wanted to do as well. And then also the thought, the thing that I thought was cool is that I think you guys said that this was the first time that you had played co-op. So you were basically on the same side playing against the scenario. 
Yeah, this is the well. I mean, aside from the play test, is the same exact scenario. You know, yeah. the first time that we played a co-op game like this for in sure. the nerd cave. Yeah, yeah, but I think uh, tweaking wise, I don't know. I think it still could use a little bit of tweaking. Well, as much and as it could have uh, if we brought in the reinforcements the same turn that the alarm sounds that which we did. No, we no, we did. We were we were going to not do we it. Did. Oh, we did. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> One of the changes was because originally we were going to just uh, sound the or when the reinforcements were going to come in at the end of the next turn. Mm, yeah. But we brought them in this turn, so or the turn of the alarm going off in this game, and it didn't really help. But I don't think maybe bumping up the French to level two, like uh, Dave was saying earlier, would probably be. That's probably what we need to do. Makes them a little bit better, but not super good. I mean, yeah. maybe equal to like our our our, our uh, allies. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Hey, another factor. Um, I was thinking because I, I was listening to you guys play. Was I didn't hear a lot of peril. You know, did you guys have like any lots of dangerous places that could hang you up? No, that's something else we could add though. Is some uh, kind of just. Some per- some random perils, yeah, some chickens or something that might attack, or a <laughs> well attack. Yeah, I mean, you might fall into. Yeah, that would be a good addition, Greg, to uh, to to the game. It's just some random things you got to pass on your way moving around the board. That would definitely up the. You could uh, you could actually put a plot point in a perilous area, like it could be like the uh, the mail pouch could have a guard dog that's protecting it or something. So then it becomes a, a perilous uh, area just to come close to the mail pouch, you know, that sort of thing. So yeah, that's a good idea as well. Yeah, that, that's actually a really good idea. So yeah. Hey, throw in uh, some gangs. Gangs are great. Gangs? <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. You could have easily done the, uh, could have easily have done the French as gangs. Um, and that, that would have been fun as well. I don't, uh, my problem was I didn't really know how many figures Travis had. So gangs definitely require a lot of miniatures uh, if you're going to put uh, French, yeah. out there. <laughs> I have a whole army of French, Frenchmen. So yeah. Of I, and, plus, <laughs> and plus the opposition will last longer. If you throw them in gangs, because once one goes down, you still got Joe's there. I mean, we we played a game where we had four gangs and that was like a all, all hell breaking loose you know but we finally got them down um yeah gangs. Yep. yeah okay well another good suggestion there so anyway yeah uh it was a fast game pretty easy but uh, again that's not all it's a lot of it was luck on our part but again that could use some tweaking and uh but uh-huh. We'll, we'll tweak yeah, it a little bit more, and then uh, we'll, we'll throw it out there for you guys to uh, try out yourself. And, uh, yeah, so that's it. So thanks to Andre for coming out as usual. And Dave uh, was um, good to, uh, good for him. <laughs> it was, thank you for coming out, Dave, to help us with this <laughs> and, the, and the test game. Yeah, lots really, of fun. Really lots helped of us fun, guys. Time. Thank you so much. I'd, yeah, I'd love to do it any time. Okay, yeah, maybe we could do another. I think we should do another shark one, but have instead of co-op, have it uh, versus. So oh, like evil, evil okay, first, uh, okay. This yeah. guy, he, the counterpart of Sharp and Harper, uh, fighting each other. So that'd be fun. So maybe that's what we'll. The next time we play, we'll do a versus uh, Sharp game like this. So. And, uh, and what Ray, was the Ray scenario? Did you, did you have Washington a scenario first, you wanted so. to do? I'm sorry, what? Did you have a scenario in mind? Uh, no, no, not yet. Uh, I'll look and I'll look okay. at it. And I'll okay. figure something out. So, but have a, a maybe an equal sized French force. And I yeah. liked. Uh, I think it's Gregory on here. I think I liked his idea of, of maybe putting some gangs out there. So, if you have enough French, if you have like thirty or forty French, we may we may put a, a big ass pile of them out there. Yeah, I have that many. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. got cavalry. I got it all. I got a whole sharp practice army for friends. Pretty good size one. So. Very cool. All right. So. All right. Yep. All right. 
I'll right, put together right. another scenario for you guys if if you'd like, and I'll and yeah. definitely I'm excited to try it again. Yeah. I really yeah. like this setting. I really like this Napoleonic setting, and and yeah. I wish I had some figures to play uh, because I'd I'd love to do it uh, a little bit myself as well. But um, uh, I'm glad you guys are doing it. I, I get to play vicariously through you. <laughs> Yeah, we'll do another one. We'll do a, another game, a versus game in this setting. So anyway, that'll do it for uh, tonight's game. So thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, check out uh, Dave's Pulp Alley Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, YouTube channel. He's got tons and tons of videos on there that will teach you everything you ever want to learn about the game, plus battle reports and everything. So and uh, check out our uh, Facebook group, our Patreon, and all the uh, social media stuff for Tabletop CP as well. And with that, we'll say thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.